everything I have learned in this business, I learned from talking with other people. And sometimes in talking with other people, I found um, that I would give some advice that maybe I wasn't following as well as I was giving. And then I would see that advice help someone's business flourish. And one of the things that stuck out to me was uh, several years ago, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine and um, he, uh, he was struggling with the same thing. Uh, it was in the Nashville market and it's, um, you know, Nashville has been booming for so long that um, the workforce isn't there. And what is there is so expensive and it's very hard to retain because there's so many people throwing money at them. And so um, going back to my equipment rental background, um, you know, I, I told him uh, we discussed uh, maybe some ways to find some machinery that could um, eliminate man hours on a job. And um, that has, um, in both his business and mine, proven um, to help our growth exponentially. You know, a lot of people would be like, okay, well, if you're eliminating workforce, it means you're eliminating jobs. And on the other side, you're investing into equipment that replaces them. It's kind of like the Walmart um, you know, Walmart scanners where you don't have the tellers anymore or the cashiers, we should say. Right. And, and my response, I just, I'd like to respond to that just quickly and then get your take on it. You know, here, here's the thing. Your business requires equipment that is going to do the job more efficiently, effectively, that allows you to maximize your business so that you can invest into things like marketing and advertising and perhaps hire on a salesperson, more salespeople and hire on more marketing people that can help your business really get more business in that can be managed almost like on a conveyor belt managed by the equipment that you've invested into. An example would be that squeegee. You know, you could either, you could either have multiple people pushing a, a broom brush squeegee, or you can have the right on squeegee that's actually laying it down a hundred times faster, probably, or whatever the number is. And, and at the end of the day, you're getting that job done. A lot of people are in the seasonal, you were seasonal as well, and you get into fall and there's not enough money saved by the end of the season because you've paid all there. your bills, <laughs> right? Exactly. And yeah, if you had sure. something set up where you knew through season that when you hit November, you know that you're going to have that money available as the cushion and to reinvest through the winter months when you can get better deals on equipment or pre-buying some that's bulk right. supplies or whatever it is, that's, that's where you really start to win. What we did in 2016, we grew 50% in 2016. And then we grew another 50% in 2017. And we grew another 50% in 2018. And we grew like, you see a trend here. Like we just keep, we just keep adding these chunks on that we, and some of these things, like I look back at last year and I'm like, we did more, we did, we added more than we did in 2016 as a total onto what we did in 2019. You know, like we just added a whole year right onto the end of the bottom line. And the, the growth, the goal setting came as a natural um, it was like a natural mm -hmm. landmark. You know, we started to gather some, we started to gather first. I mean, if you don't have values and you don't have values left or right with your people, it's going to be really hard to have a standard to hold them to, you know? And so the first goal for us was to have people. And it sounds, this sounds crazy because most industries don't have this problem. One of our first goals was show up on time every day, right? Show up on time every day. It seems, seems like a crazy, a crazy high standard for the paving industry. Well, that that one just led itself into, okay, now we got consistent people, we can build a business. Then that, what's the next logical step? And it grew from values into sales goals into, okay, we've, we're now a mom and pop shop that we don't know how to do this on a, on a, on a scalable level. We probably need some help. And, and we got some outside help to help us structure the sales side. Cause you know, that's something that you need sometimes some help with. Speak, 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 of, speak. Brian Hess just showed up and says, what's up boys, by the way. So yeah. 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 And, and so we, 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 in all of the facets of business, you know, you got your people over here, you got your sales over here, you got your marketing, your, all of these different things. And every single one of them, we had a real lack of structure. And one of the things that we're realizing is that we're not great with the structure in general. 
But what we do know is that every time that we put some effort in, we get a little better and a little better and a little better. And every year that we've done this over the last five years, um, I, I can't even begin to explain to you what we have today and the systems and processes and how advantageous and frustrating they are at the same time uh, that that allow us to be successful. You know, a, when we started working with Brian a year and a half ago, a year ago, uh, I couldn't have told you what my job cost was or my per ton rate, uh, you know, and, and my what it, what each one of these jobs or by the week, what our profitability was. But if I asked my, you know, my mom runs the office, if I asked her, hey, this week, what was what was our cost? You know, in a very in a few minutes, she could get it to us. What did we collect on? What didn't we collect on? What is our, you know, what's our uh, accounts receivable aging stuff look like? I can't tell. I can't tell you how many thousands of dollars on an organizational level we lost because we lost our ability to collect it. Because we simply were so unorganized that we had no idea that we could collect it. You know, and and that's the that's the some of the goals. Goals don't have to be big. You don't have to write a. I'm going to sell one million dollars or five million dollars. But if you don't have a goal, you're never going to get anywhere. So pick something that's that you think you know whatever you think is doable. Add a little on top of it, because if you miss that goal and you end just a little bit short, you just still won anyway. Tell us a little bit about the, you know, the, the company through the process, of course, has invested into equipment. So you start, you had a, you know, you started right, right at the beginning with, with drums and a paint mixer and buckets and pails. And, you know, you, you grew over, over the period of 30, 30 plus years. Um, tell us about the importance of reinvesting into your business. Okay, senior. Well, I wish I'd have figured that this out a lot sooner, truthfully, because uh, I was in business for more than 15 years paving before I bought my first motorized paver. So 15 years of pulling a drag box around uh, wow. with a dump truck, Sometimes with a tractor, you know, whatever it took. Uh, that was the coolest moment we did back in the late 80s when we bought a tractor. It was like amazing. It revolutionized what we did. But 15 years of pulling a drag box around. And I did industrial job. I did all kinds of work and with a drag box. And But I wish I'd have learned earlier that uh, try different things. Go to the go to the people, especially in this environment. Truthfully, you can get help if you ask for it. Back back then, the only ones that would help me were the equipment dealers that would that would offer me uh, offer me equipment, but for double the price because I couldn't afford to buy it. So they would they would finance me. Yeah, they they'd carry me for a little while, but it would cost me a lot more money. And they did help me. Truthfully, they did help, but. I wish I'd have learned early on to to buy better and to imagine better equipment and doing things just a tiny bit faster. I, I was so concerned with the why that I didn't understand that that if I that if I concentrated for a few minutes on on being a little bit more productive that I wouldn't have to worry so much about the why in, in every moment. And so I gave up a lot of productivity because I didn't, I didn't look ahead. I didn't have any vision that way. And I was standing with a guy the other day. He's 25 years in business. And he looks at me and says, 35 years in business. That's amazing. And I said, actually, I don't see myself as any, not a good businessman at all. And he said, that can't be true. And I said, well, just because I'm tenacious and I can take pain doesn't mean I'm a good businessman. I, I'm good. I can do those two things. Uh, and wow. he kind of got he kind of got the point. I can take a lot of pain, and what I didn't back up from the pain long enough to see that if I swung a deal on a a really good roller and a really good paver, that it could have revolutionized what I did earlier. I just didn't see it. I just I couldn't get into the concept because I was too worried about the why taking money home to the kids 
if I bought a new paver, it would take money away from them. So I thought. I've learned that that's not necessarily true. Because uh, I remember, I remember, you know, I wrote down in my notes, uh, the first time that we had a hydraulically agitated sealer tank was 2008. That's 20 years he'd been in the business before he had a hydraulically agitated sealer tank. We, we did it the old fashioned way. Do you, um, in, from my, from knowing what we know now, that was one of the dumbest things we've ever done. Knowing what we know now, but it, we didn't know any better. There's no way we could have understood the value that it would bring to spend that money on those pieces of equipment. The same holds true with pavers, rollers, skid steers. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If it, if it's on the job and it's making you money, then uh, don't be, don't be wasteful by any means. But if you need something and it's something you use every day, you know, if you can put 500 plus hours on a machine in a year, then it might be worth having a new one debate depending on what it is. And, I, and I'll give you an example of this. Uh, about a month ago, about a month ago, we paved 1,734 tons in one day. Uh, the most we'd ever done before that was a little over 1,100 ish. I don't know the exact total because paperwork was not our strong suit in 2007, eight and nine. <laughs> um, but I can tell you that in 10 hours, we averaged 180 tons an hour. And in just under 10 hours, we did 1,732 point something tons. This is the, we blew the old record out of the water by 600 tons. And there are some weeks now that even as a big company, we don't do 600 tons. And we did 1,700 in a day because we had the people, we had the tools, we had all of the things in place. And that morning, I looked at the guys and I said, do you think this is possible? And they're like, I don't know. I mean, the only way to know is if we try. And I said, well, you know, do, do you think it's possible? And they're like, I mean, let's try. And it, 10 hours, it took 10 hours to pave that, to pave what it used to take. That would have taken, we would never have gotten the job 10 years ago. I wouldn't have known how to bid it. I wouldn't have known what we could do. I wouldn't have known any of that. But we had the tools, we had the opportunity, and we had that matched with the culture that said, yeah, let's try, why not? Well, the worst that's gonna happen is we don't finish. In, in regards to the challenges you find in taking that approach of being the highest priced, do you find that that's challenging sometimes when you're in your- It was absolutely challenging at the beginning because nobody knew us from a hole in the wall. And so, you know, we try to give a price and there'd be people undercutting us um, and we just lose all the bids. Like literally at the beginning, we didn't win any bids. And then what we did was we decided to really brand our company because we saw a gap in the market. Nobody was really branding and being professional. So once we flipped that switch um, and branded our company and our trucks and our image and also um, the quality of our work, now we're able to charge that top dollar, no problem. And people want to pay that top dollar. When we say branding, we're saying branding everywhere, right? Branding on social media, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. You Like everywhere. Your everywhere, trucks, yeah. your flyers, your brochures, your proposals, your business cards. Branding. Well, as you can see, investing into your business is the only way to grow. You need to invest into the right equipment, the right tools, and the right supplies in order to maximize your business. Think about what Mr. Callaway said. If he knew then what he knew now, man, he would be so much further ahead. He did go through the, the hard knocks, you know, tractor drop boxes and drag boxes for paving, etc. But if he was investing into his business back then and had the control of the reins of his business, investing into the right equipment, the right tools and the right supplies, he'd be way ahead of where he is right now. However, congratulations, Mr. Callaway, you've grown tremendously and you're sharing this message with everybody to help them. So let's invest into our business now. Let's continue to focus on maximizing our business and becoming more efficient so that we ultimately are growing towards the goals that we're setting and wanting to achieve.